shiny. Whoa, hello. Look at this. right there to connect the point. Looks like, looks like it'll flake. Give it a try. Look at that. Some kind of black flint. I'm not sure what that is. I'll keep that though. One for the effort, at least. Interesting black flint. I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna have to look into this area and see if I could get a name. You fishing there? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Limestone. This is a good sign. There's there's stuff around. This is a piece of limestone, and usually when you find limestone chunks like that, there is flint nearby. So, somewhere around here, maybe up there, washing down. Here's a piece, thin piece. So, limestone, limestone, flint, chert. I'll show you on the edge here. See how shiny that is there? This would be good for um, like a flint and steel. If you have the steel, you could hit this against it. It'll create a spark. I got some flint, fire steel, char cloth. I was just testing this piece because I saw this little tiny shiny. Whoa, hello. Look at this. It's got limestone in it, but it's a lot of flint. And it's white on the outside. <laughs> what the hell is this? 
Okay. Looks similar to this. This is more crystally. This is fine grained. So this is like a bunch of different stuff here apparently. Cool. So I lied about this being the only piece here. There's actually a bunch. I just wasn't looking at it because it's white. I was looking for this, not that. So I napped this from some of that rock. Gnarly looking stuff. In the wall, huge chunks. Is there? We're still uh, heading to the campground, but I decided to stop here, and I found a what looks to be a giant piece of flint here. I'll give it a test and see how it looks. Let's try this edge. It's not high, high quality, but it'll nap. I'm gonna bring it with me to experiment with. Looks more limestone than chert to me. Okay. That there is good flint for creek flint. That is the best creek flint I have found. So first thing I'm gonna do to work on the spear is make a stone chopper. And it's going to be really rough, and I'm just going to do it really quick. It's just I need a sharpened edge, serrated edge, that I could chop things with. And this is uh, almost all limestone, so I'm going to use a limestone chopper. So I'm going to hit this low platform here. It's lower than the rest of the rock. That's where you want to hit. And you want to brace it with your fingers so that when you hit, it travels, the shock wave travels down your fingers and makes the flake run along the edge here. So on all of these, I'm using a, a ball end of an antler. And I'm looking for a ledge like that where I could just knock off pieces. And uh, you could use these to scrape down the wood. They're going to be super sharp. So don't waste any of those. And like I'm almost done with this already. I just need a just need a sharpened edge, really. This edge sharp. There we go. Now, that I could use. So, we're just going to use this kind of in a, a motion like that. We're just going to chop with it. And I'm going to do that until the, uh, the wood gets cut through. And it'll take a little bit, but it'll work. This here would be a primitive hand axe. Most of them have the tip sharpened. I like to use the side on mine. It's easier too. So I'm gonna use the uh, really primitive hand axe here to cut up this wood. So this was a little too big uh, for my hand to be doing the work here at this angle. So I snapped it in half and I'm just gonna use this end. This end is sharper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in at this angle like that, over and over, and then I'm gonna come in at this angle to create a V. And I'm gonna do that over and over again until it cuts through.
So I cut through a little more than halfway. So I'm gonna take my big moose antler here. So what I'm gonna do now is cut another groove here. A V cut straight in. So I'm gonna use the hand ax. I'm gonna saw, sawing motion straight in like that. And this is gonna take a while, but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm gonna use the handle of the antler to knock it out. There we go. You can see it's starting to cut right there and you just gotta go in there and go in there. We have to go to about here. That should be enough. I've been using this primitive hand axe as a, actually a saw. You can see the sawdust coming out of there. I just keep sawing a little at a time. And I think that's good enough take now. Take a piece of flint that we collected from the river and nap a spear point out of it. Now hopefully I'll get a good piece out of this. So both look okay. This one will be this one will be easier. So I'll try this one first. Now for it to be a working spear point, it doesn't have to be much bigger than that. So when I'm doing this, I'm abrading the edges. I'm dulling the edges to make it so that when I hit on these spots that are lower, when I hit on them, it travels along this line and creates a big flake. Same thing, you would hit there and you would hit there. And you just keep doing that over and over again to thin it down. So here is a platform and here is a platform. Those are places you want to hit. It'll follow this line. The flake will thin it down along these lines. You can see right here, the shallow area is where one of the flakes came off. Same thing with here. And you just keep doing that over and over again until it gets down to the shape and size you want. So the platform there and the platform there. The lowest points on the rock. I've ground all the edges so that I could see what I'm doing here. And where I where I should hit is the low platforms. So there and there and there. And when you flip it over, here's a low spot, here's a low kind of low spot, here's a low spot, low spot. So I'm gonna use the indirect method, which is the issue stick under the leg hit with antler. And that allows more power to be driven into the flakes to push them off rather than trying to sit there with your wrist or with your shoulder and pushing the flake off with brute strength. You're instead just like that. Pushing the point into the copper tip. And as I press in, I hit with this to get the flake off. And you do that all the way down the piece to thin it. So I hit right there. So this one cleaned up a lot. It went almost across the whole thing. And look how much width that took off. So when you pulled it off, it's way thinner. Now for the final shaping and sharpening, uh, usually I use a caribou antler stuck in a stick with some pine sap, and pine pitch glue, but this has been ground down to a nub, so on the other side I have a little stick of copper, 
and I'm just going to use that to finish it up. And same thing, I'm just going to zigzag across the piece and push little tiny flakes off. You don't want to take too much off here. So this is what I do for final resharpening. It's just pushing those little flakes off. And this is a pretty good uh, fluid point. So this is an accurate um, replica of a Paleo-Indian spear point. Would have been used about 13,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. And uh, these were used to hunt large game like a caribou. And they would put it on a atlatl dart and throw it with a spear thrower. The spear thrower was called an atlatl. And these darts would travel very, very forcefully into the animal. And then they had their food and clothes. So um, you could do all of this with just antler. You don't need the copper. You could do it with antler. It just takes a little bit more pressure to get those flakes off. We finished the spear point in relatively short time. So now we're going to go put it on a stick. In one of my previous videos, I showed how to make these Paleolithic, Paleo-Indian end scrapers that were mostly used for hide working, but they were used for woodworking as well. And I've been using that to scrape off the bark and to thin this down. I've just been holding it between my two fingers like this and just peeling up over and over again, thinning it and taking all that bark off. I also shaped the edges a little better by just continually scraping along the edge there. So I've been using my uh, flint napping, a braiding, st braiding stone. It's just a coarse stone. Any coarse stone can do this. And I've just been grinding and sanding the edge up here to make a smooth transition. It's just like sandpaper, works exactly the same. Uh, sandstone will do this, anything that's coarse grain stone will do this. And I'm just doing it on both sides and smoothing it all out. And switching back and forth between the sandstone and the scraper. So I also chopped the bottom off. And I chopped some of these nubs off with the chopper. Just kept whacking at it until they came off. Um, what I'm going to do now is fire harden this and try to straighten it a little bit. But when you fire harden it, it makes it so that if you're, if you're thrusting into something, it doesn't break. It makes it a lot stronger. So you're going to want to do that to your survival, survival walking stick. So what you're going to want to do is not burn the stick but rotate it through the fire and keep it moving as much as you can. You don't want to burn the stick. You just want to let the flames touch it. You're heating the wood. So you'll know it's done when it's hot to the touch. You could touch it, but if you keep on too long, it'll burn you. And it should be like that all the way to the tip. Just slightly, slightly blackened come off on your fingers. So what we're gonna do is we need um, some kind of glue to connect the spear point to the spear. And we're gonna make a primitive glue today. You need charcoal and some pine sap. So what you do is you just find a, a rock with a flat surface and you start busting up the charcoal. You want it to be as fine powder as you could get it. So now what you do is you melt the pine sap onto the charcoal. Okay.
I don't want to burn it too much. Just want it to melt. And start mixing it into the charcoal. And I'm just going to keep doing that over and over again until it's very liquidy. So now that we've melted the glue, we're going to haft everything together. We're going to put this into the knock here. And you could really, really glob this stuff on. When it, uh, ah, that's hot. When it cools down, it'll, uh, it'll dry really hard, really secure. And you could put a little bit on the outside to just secure the base more. And this will also waterproof this area. Then you take your point and you're going to haft it in. You be careful here because you can cut yourself doing this. So you're going to want to fit this in as perfectly as it could go. And then we just check to see where the glue is. And before it dries, it's starting to dry. You add more right there to connect the point. And then a little bit right there as well. So we'll set this aside to dry and we'll figure out what we're going to use as a cordage for that. So before this dries too much, you're going to want some kind of cordage. Uh, ancient peoples used sinew. They would chew the deer tendon in their mouth and wrap it around. I don't have any of that with me. I'm just on a camping trip, but I do have paracord. So we cut the paracord at both sides and you're gonna pull these strings out like that. And then you'll take one of the strands, you lay it in the glue, and you wrap around. Like this. And I'm actually going to do two sets of strand. Pine pitch is super sticky. wrap it around the stick too so it has to go around the point and around the stick like that so what I like to do is take some of the pitch and just put it over top of the cordage you don't need a lot just enough to strengthen the cordage as well and kind of rub it in like that and you're going to do that on both sides. And this is really starting to dry up. So you want all of the cordage to be covered black. So as it's drying, if you do this quickly, you could press it in and smooth it out and make it look a little bit better. Then you're just gonna let it sit. So the spear is finished. It's all dried. Look at that nasty thing. That thing will make a huge wound. 
Look at that. So, with the spear, we used just a fallen branch at the campsite, some primitive pine pitch glue, a fluted point made from, I believe it is isopus. Now, we didn't have sinew, so we used cordage, but we wrapped that with the pine pitch glue as well, and that'll dry really, really solid. This rope will not break. And now we have a defensive weapon against predators, against large animals if need be, and you have a very long reach with this thing. You have extended reach. So with your extended reach, you could very easily bite off something. And the spear is one of the oldest weapons in the world. This is the original weapon made from flint that I collected out of a creek. And to see that, you could check back in the old video where I found this flint and how I found this flint. So I feel really uh, well protected tonight while I'm camping. And you guys should try this. I mean, it's never a bad thing to have added protection when you're out in the wild. Um, you just want to make sure you put a cover on this if you're walking with it. Put a cover on this if you're walking with it. You want something solid and hard to cover it. So thanks so much for hanging out and watching this, guys. I had a good time. Hope you did. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And when you do that, hit the bell icon. You'll be able to see more primitive build videos like this primitive stone-tipped spear that I made very quickly. And you could make it too. Check out my playlist. I have many other primitive builds in the past and more incoming. So you'll be able to see uh, primitive tools, primitive traps, many things. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. See you guys soon. So big shout out to Josh. Thanks for making this video possible, man. You uh, signed up as a patron on Patreon. You help make stuff like this happen. You get to see more videos, you get to learn, you get to learn how to do these things. Check it out. I'll put the uh, link in the description for everybody else. But seriously, thank you, Josh. I really appreciate your elite membership. And I'll be sure to show you how to do these things. Thank you. It's <laughs> the paces I normally make off camera. Mountain food fuel. Mwah.